And with the options menu, you can go to game and you can select the combat difficulty. The game starts you on default at low combat difficulty. I'd recommend this because the fighting style is kind of difficult. But then there's also default. So don't be confused when they start you at low combat difficulty by default. I'm gonna go over Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. And does this deserve to be in your video game collection? I'm gonna go over that and more right now. If this is your first time here and you wanna get more fast, fun, and informative content, smack that like and subscribe button for a bountiful rice harvest. Let's get into it. First thing I wanna go over is that this game comes with an instruction booklet. I haven't seen one of these in like a decade or so. I mean, it has great artwork, it's formatted well, I bet it has great information. What, did I read it? No! Instruction booklets are like resumes for a job interview. First off, you have to have one. It's gotta look good, it's gotta be formatted well, and of course you gotta add some sense to it, like this one smells like rice and debauchery, but ultimately, no one's gonna be reading it. But you can if you want to. Sakuna of Rice of Ruin is a combo-based side-scrolling adventure that is bookended by rice farming. The rice farming, in my opinion, is the most fascinating part about this game. No, 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 don't leave, don't leave, don't leave, let me explain. Farming is how players will develop their stats. The better soil and crops, the better your stats will grow. So if your rice tastes so good that it kicks you in the face, you're gonna be kicking some monsters in the face. I don't, I don't know, there's a joke in there somewhere. All in all, the rice segments are important to amplifying your stats. Presentation-wise, this tickles all the fancies. The anime-esque style and the pastel color suit Sakuna's ethereal appeal. The voice acting is pretty well performed and directed, so well so that it never broke me out of the immersion. That's some heavenly voice acting, which definitely matches the game's setting. In Sakuna of Rice and Ruin, you play as Sakuna, a lazy, arrogant, and bratty goddess who is living off of her fortunes and status. You come across some humans escaping to the lofty realm. They sneak in and cause havoc, eat your food offering, and you accidentally blow up your own offering. Because of this, you are banished to an island swarming with demons, and your job is to liberate it. Through the progression of the story, I like that every character has a backstory and character progression. And yes, even that little baby Zinogre has some story progression. But what's a good story without a compelling gameplay? If you've ever played Act Razor for the SNES or Rune Factory, this game is pretty comparable. You have the scavenging slash adventure side scrolling sections to progress through the island and story. And then you have rice growing sections which boost your stats when cultivated well. The side scrolling sections involve fast paced battles that rely on the use of your raiment or goldie scarf thingy. You can use it to swoop past foes, flip foes, and slam foes all over the place. The engaging side-scrolling sections are bookended by a relaxing and rejuvenating rice farming section, and it is able to create a great balance of both fast and slow engagement. If this rice farming gameplay isn't your thing, you can send NPCs to do the work for you. I actually didn't try out this section because I really enjoyed the rice farming, and if you decide to do the farming yourself, you gain skills which makes farming a lot easier. The soundtrack of Sakuna of Rice and Ruin is simply miraculous. You have to listen to this. Every track I've heard suits every situation as best as possible. When you're out adventuring, you'll hear this banjo-like instrument called a shamisen, and the performer is doing quite a soloistic display. And even in the rice farm, each season has their own soundtrack for both daytime and night. I personally love the summer soundtracks and the winter soundtracks. There's one main thing that happens throughout Sakuna of Rice of Ruin. One happens in the beginning when you expand your rice farm, when the main characters are singing this song to help them plant rice easier. Another is that you hear this theme throughout a lot of the side-scrolling sections, and then it happens again at the very end. To sprinkle in this main theme and then have it come home at the very end is quite spectacular. There's a couple things I wish the game were a little more clear about, especially for my first playthrough of the game. One of those is equipment skills and how to unlock them. For example, if I press Y, which is select power, I can now see what I need to do to upgrade this ability. For example, Tailor Made enhances hidden power effects of garments by 5%, and to unlock it, I need to release 10 spear threads in total. First off, what does that mean? I can tell you now that you basically need to spend 10 spear threads in order to get that ability. And some are very interesting, like this obtained feature. So if I fight something that gives me deer antlers, such as one of the deer enemies, I need to be having this equipment, such as the wave hunter's garment, I need to have this equipment on in order to get, in order to have this activated. So if I have another piece of equipment on, such as not wave hunter's garment, and get five deer antlers, I won't unlock this. I need to have wave hunter's garment on, hunt for five deer antlers, and then I can unlock this. I don't have to release them or spend them, I just have to be able to 
obtain those deer antlers while wearing that equipment. I just wish that stuff was a little more clear. Speaking of clarity, if you go over to items and then go down to key items, you obtain a bunch of scrolls while going through the levels, and these scrolls are super important. They all have information that's really needed to help you progress well. For example, this nightfall, they say demons are stronger at nighttime, so take care when the sun sets. However, there are some treasures that only nocturnal demons drop. There are really no nocturnal demons, they're just the same demons, but now you're fighting them at nighttime. For example, the five elemental materials are only found at night. Hone your strength before you attempt to hunt after dark. So my advice, as soon as you're able to go through a level during nighttime, go ahead and start farming that area, because then you're going to get these elemental materials, which then you can unlock the ability to get even better equipment, such as better weapons or better armor. Something I wish I knew during my first playthrough. Granted, they have exploration objectives on the left side of the screen, where it says defeat enemies at night 40, and then you'll discover that you have new materials, but I, that wasn't made clear to me right away. For example, you see right next to me, Moonlit Stone. If they just had, just like just like uh, on Defeat Enemies Night, if they just had Moonlit Stone in parentheses Night, that'll make it more clear that the item will only show up at night. That's just some quality of life stuff that would have made it more clear for the player, so that you wouldn't have to rack your brain around and try to remember where you got stuff. Also, you get these rune type things that have different type of abilities, like such as Broomstick Awakening raises the attack of Bamboo Broom relative to your magic, and then this luck boost which enhances your luck by 50, and luck is a critical boost, so I'm definitely going to be adding some luck in there. For example, this vitality boost has like this spiritual currency, which is amber. I just need to have a bunch of it to unlock these levels. So right now I have vitality by 5, all I have to do is enter this and press the Y button with at least power, boom, now I'm level, now I'm level 2, which is 10. So it's kind of like Monster Hunter, where some pieces of equipment have slots so you can put gems in, and some pieces of equipment just don't. Another quick tip, as soon as you get Swallow Slice, put that in your repertoire. It's kind of like an up B Pikachu type thing from Smash Brothers. It allows players to traverse through levels really quick, and it allows you to reach places you couldn't without it. And with the options menu, you can go to game, and you can select the combat difficulty. The game starts you on default at low combat difficulty. I'd recommend this because the fighting style is kind of difficult. But then there's also default. So don't be confused when they start you at low combat difficulty by default. I'd highly recommend this game, it's pretty awesome. You have fast paced gameplay, you have nice relaxing paced gameplay, you have a good story to boot, and the music is amazing. If you've played this game already, comment down below, what did you think about Sakuna? If you haven't picked up this game, or you haven't heard of it, let me know in the comments down below. But this game has really helped tide me over until the next Monster Hunter update, and a video right here showing you the best build builds for Monster Hunter Rise 2.0 update. Thanks for watching another video. Stay healthy, stay strong, catch you next time. I missed you guys.